Labor heartland is under attack by the Greens in a number of inner city seats, but nowhere more than the seat of Melbourne. If the current trend holds firm, Greens candidate Adam Bant is poised to win a seat that's been a Labor stronghold since 1904. If successful, he'd create history by becoming the first Green to win a lower house seat in the federal parliament. The Greens' momentum accelerated after the Labor Party's long-serving popular member and finance minister Lindsay Tanner announced his decision to retire. Kirsten Murray reports. For the man bookies have as clear favourite, Greens candidate Adam Bant is hedging his bets. Look, I know the bookies say that we're in with a chance, but my sense from talking to people is that there's a lot of people who are really undecided, even two, three days out from an election, perhaps for the first time in their life. As the saying goes, every vote counts, but in the seat of Melbourne, that's never been more true, and the timing's never been better. In this increasingly disillusioned electorate, the Greens have the chance to make history and strike at Labor heartland. Well, if you look at the seat of Melbourne and the Greens were to genetically design any seat, it would look like Melbourne on a whole lot of indicators. It's been described as the most cosmopolitan seat in the most cosmopolitan city in Australia. I would say the Greens are favourites to win Melbourne this Saturday. And it's the only seat in the country where the choice is between Greens and Labor. And we need one in ten people who voted Labor last time to come over and vote for the Greens for us to make history and win our first seat at a general election. Yes, I'm Adam. I'm a local Greens candidate for the election. While Adam Band may have failed in his bid to win the seat at the last election, he was successful in eroding Labor's majority. That's right. That's right. But the odds for the former industrial lawyer dramatically improved Proved when popular sitting member Lindsay Tanner announced his retirement just weeks before this election was called. <laughs> it's been a race against time for Kath Botell, who was thrust forward as Labor's replacement. After a successful career as industrial officer for the ACTU, she doesn't want to be the first losing Labor candidate in this seat for more than a century. Well, of course, Lindsay's been a terrific member for Melbourne, and my job's been to convince people that I'll continue that tradition. I'm not uh, taking anything for granted. I'm campaigning right up until 6 o'clock on Saturday night. Dr Paul Strangio from Monash University says it's not just Kath Botell's political career at stake if the Greens win. It was the citadel of old Labor here in Victoria. And to lose that seat, I think, will very much strike at the, the psyche of the Labor Party and it'll be quite traumatic for it. Hey, you got the badge on. Great. <laughs> Good. But as support for the Greens surges, Kath Botell's facing a backlash from traditional Labor voters, disappointed with the party's approach on climate change and asylum seekers. I think there's hope. Thank you. You've pitched yourself as a progressive voice, but how strong will your voice be up against the Labor Party machine? Labor has a good track record of reform. I'm very proud of the things that Labor has done in government. Things like building new schools, things like building a large-scale rollout of new public housing, things like increasing the aged pension. Um, but those things only get done from government. So it's very important that we have both progressive views, but we are pragmatic as well about ensuring that we can continue to deliver all the things that people rely on. People here in this electorate have been taken for granted. It's been assumed by Labor that they can lurch to the right as far as they want and become like a pale shadow of the Liberal Party and that people will still be forced to vote for them because they feel that there's no other choice. Oh, that's good. That's good. And proof perhaps that the Greens are no longer seen as a fringe dwelling alternative is news of a record donation from the Victorian branch of the Electrical Trades Union. In his previous legal career, Adam Bant represented the union, but he says neither he nor his party will be beholden to any lobby group. We've got uh, independent party platform and we will stick to that and we're not going to be um, captive to anyone's agenda other than our party platform and representing the interests of the people who vote for me. Is that an embarrassment for you given your, your union connections? No, look I'm getting support from a lot of trade unions, from a lot of labour law firms but also of course from the fantastic members of the Australian Labor Party who live in the electorate of Melbourne. 
At the end of the day, I'm not looking to unions for support. I'm looking to, to the people of Melbourne for their support to be their representative in Canberra. In the final days of the campaign, the Greens suffered an embarrassment of their own. Leaked internal emails suggested the party was fiercely divided over a preference deal with Labor, even leading to claims Green power brokers were no different to the major party machines. The Greens as a party, we've collectively made decisions and we make decisions on the basis of consensus um, and uh, we came together and made a decision about what would happen about preferences and it was a democratic decision of the party. It's unlikely such a deal will be enough to dissuade Green supporters in Melbourne. Possibly the greatest hurdle the party will face is a last minute change of heart at the polling booth. We also have to bear in mind, of course, as we move forward to Saturday, whether the broader atmospherics of the election, claims that it is on a knife edge, might push some possible defecting Labor voters who are thinking about voting Green and bring them back to the Labor fold. That's certainly what Cath Botel and Labor will be counting on. But to be safe, they've enlisted colleagues at her old workplace to hit the phones to warn of the dangers of going green. It's not fear. What I'm asking people to recognise is that it is only from government that you can deliver legislation. It's only from government that you get to deliver programs, funding programs, because you have to be in the Treasury to make those decisions. And for many voters in this electorate, it will be domestic issues like health, education and housing that will be on their minds this weekend. And Labor's hoping that may just be enough to turn back the green tide. Kirsten Murray reporting from Melbourne.